What is commercial art? I know I got signed up for this art thing or I got put in this class. But Mr. Farrell, what is it exactly? That's a fantastic question. But also understand, you need to know the warning signs of what it means to be an artist. This, this is your brain on art. First your drawing, and then it's full on graphic design. Doodling is the gateway to illustration. I found this in your room. We need to talk. No, but seriously, what is art? Art is what? Come on, write down your best answer in your sketchbook what you think art is. And if you wrote communication, you would be correct. That's great and all, Mr. Farrell, but that doesn't tell me what commercial art is. What is this class? Commercial artists are professional artists who have a career in art. Think concept art, illustration, promotional graphics, graphic design, fashion design, animation, caricatures, and so much more. I've got a poster with over 180 careers in the visual arts in my room alone. This is fine art. Its purpose is to be aesthetically pleasing, and it is. When you look at it, it, it pleases the eye, and it can be self-indulgent. It can be made just because the artist wants to make something that they care about. It's for them. Fine art's all about self-expression. Yeah, but what does the word aesthetics actually even mean? Aesthetics is a branch of philosophy dealing with the nature of art and beauty and taste. Does something look good to you? Is it pretty? What are our standards of beauty? Like, why do we find some things like, we all agree on like, that just looks good. I like Ferraris. You probably wouldn't mind one either. Both fine art and commercial art can share aesthetic qualities. Some of them are imitationalism. Like how much does what you're designing represent something that exists in real life? Maybe formalism, like how are you using design principles to create your image? Like balance and symmetry and unity. These are all words that we're going to explore this year. And emotionalism. Do I feel something by looking at your work? Does it evoke an emotional response out of me? How does it make me feel? See, commercial art can also be aesthetically pleasing, but it must serve a purpose. And that purpose is Serving clients. And clients pay. Like, pay you money. But clients can also be scary. But don't worry, we're going to teach you how to work with them. So you can have a harmonious relationship and make lots of money. And I know what you're thinking about. What about expressing ourselves through our art, Mr. Farrell? I mean, come on, man. How can we express ourselves? That's an excellent question. Expressing yourself is important because it'll be the key to developing your artistic voice. And there are three key parts to understanding your artistic voice. You see, it demonstrates your aesthetic skills, that means your skills to make something pretty, your professionalism, and your personality. You need all three of these to have that voice. One of the key ways that you develop your voice is by observing those who are better than you. You want to get good at cooking? You watch people who cook. You want to get better at art? You look at people who make it and who make it better than you. And you'll start finding that your tastes, like in food, are different from the person next to you. And that becomes part of your artistic personality and part of your artistic voice. Think about when you sing a song in the shower, right? A lot of people do or in their car by themselves you're basically imitating or practicing the music that you like and hopefully you're getting closer and closer to sounding what you care about well it's the same thing is true when you're designing something or drawing something you are finding people that you like and you imitate their style and practice what they do so you get closer and closer to their greatness so you can find your own i had more than one friend tell me 
that after they had a meal from my grandmother, that it was the greatest meal they'd ever had in their life. I remember watching her for hours, learning just by observing what she was doing. It was magical. When it showed up on the table, it was like, wow. She would give Martha Stewart a run for her money. And the same thing is true for design. You know, I've spent many years in art colleges and art programs learning and learning and learning. In fact, I've never stopped. Because I know from watching others and incorporating their skills into my own, I'm only going to get better. That's how we learn. That's why we learn. And why it never gets boring because there's always something else new. Oh, and we are going to screw up. That's part of the nature of what we do. We're going to make mistakes. Mistakes and failures are necessary in order to discover success. But do you know how many times this guy probably fell down before he ever got this good? You know, there was a point in your life where you could not walk. You fell down countless times and you cried about it. In fact, one of the reasons you cried because you couldn't talk. You couldn't express yourself. And now I'm sure in class, I'm going to be begging all of you to please be quiet because you can't stop. In other words, you got good at talking because you do it a lot. And the more that you do or try anything, the better you're going to get. But you've got to be willing to fail. Get through the tears, get through the crying, get through the bumps and the bruises, and then boom, you will have a shot like this guy here. And I know some of you are sitting there going, but what about my style, Mr. Farrell? You're young. And being young means you have an opportunity to develop lots of styles. But I have a style. Do you? Here's a young artist exploring four different styles. A realistic style, a scaly style, a rendered comic style, and a manga style. Style is not voice. A great artist can draw in any style, but voice is your identity. One of the best examples I have of this is the singer Pink. She's got a great voice that can sing in any style. Originally, she was supposed to be a rock star. And then they told her, you're a girl, can't be a rock star. Can you imagine in this day and age that happened to her? So she started off her career as an R&B singer. And now she's earned the right to sing whatever she wants. I have mad respect for her. And she can sing R&B, pop, rock, metal, funk, rap, classical, dub, disco, you name it. She's done it. And done it well. Why? Because her artistic voice is phenomenal. And it enables her to do any style she wishes. And in commercial art, I wish that for you. So while we develop your artistic voice, which is going to take some time, we're definitely not going to limit you to one style. In fact, we're going to expose you to a whole bunch because why would you limit yourself? Because greatness is about expanding beyond the boundaries of limitations. You want to improve your voice? Try things that are different to you. Try different styles. And these different styles will help you adapt your voice to any given situation that you need. You wouldn't tell Chuck Norris he could only have one style. And whatever style you choose to explore, your voice will be there. Because your voice is who you are. This is not your voice. This is just bad. And understand, the more that you work, the better your artistic voice will be. I'm Farrell, and this has been a Brain River High School art production.